So I'm now joined by Matt Taylor from ESA. And Matt, um, you've got behind you the uh, Rosetta mission. Could you tell us a little bit about it? Well, Rosetta was, I would say, one of our biggest missions in, in Europe. Uh, it was a, a comet chasing mission. It took 10 years to get where it was going. It was formulated in the, the 80s, this mission. And it really has opened our eyes uh, a great deal as to the history of our solar system and how comets are linked to us on Earth. But more importantly, I would say, and the reason that we're here uh, at Destination is because with Rosetta, we really made great inroads in, in interacting with the public and, and, and getting their imagination going. And it triggered a lot of interaction with science fiction. And so that's, that's why we're here. We're trying to match up people's interest in science fiction with science fact. And Rosetta was a great vehicle for that. So through my interactions with Rosetta, uh, to people like Bobak Fedowski, the, uh, the Mohawk guy, uh, JPL, he introduced me to the, the destination crowd. And so uh, we got ESA involved. And now we, we've, this is our second time that we are. And we're here in, in, in a big way with our model to talk to people about what we do and how it links with space and science fiction. Could we go and have a quick look at the Rosetta? Yes, yes, certainly, yeah. You can have a look at this. I mean, this is... This is a quarter scale model. Uh, quarter? It's quarter scale, so yeah, it's about eight odd meters, this one. The real one was 32 meters tip to tip, weighed about 3,000 kilograms on launch. And unfortunately, the, the real one, we smashed into the comet in the end of its life to, uh, to, to end the mission. That was planned though, wasn't yes, it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it was, uh, the thing is, we'd spent a lot of, we really wanted to get very close to the comet to analyze what, what it was made of, but it was very difficult. It's a very dusty environment. So, engineers are a little bit reluctant to, to be dangerous with spacecraft, and, and we said to them, look, uh, we were going to smash it in, smash it into the comet in the end, so you don't have to be as worrisome about the risk that we're taking. So, that was a way of really getting as close as possible at the end of mission. But we've got this model, uh, the, the big news for this weekend is the Bepi Colombo mission, which is going to Mercury, and that will be launching in less than a day, it's gonna, I think at quarter to three tomorrow morning, um, that's when a lot of us will, we're going to see if we'll carry on from the party to somebody's room to watch the launch in, uh, in Karoo. Drunk? No, just happy and anticipating a successful launch, because this is, this is a big one, and that's one of the speakers, we've got eight speakers here talking to everyone about all of the things that we do in ESA. We've got people that work on the ISS, the International Space Station, uh, people that are going to talk about, as I say, Bepi Colombo, about uh, galaxies, about how binary systems interact, so we've got science, we've got engineers, there's a whole swathe of people here to talk to, and we hope we get a lot of people interested in, in what we're doing, and it's an honour for us to be here, to talk to the, the hardcore Trek fans. Well, it's a thrill for us to see some real space experts here. Can we just very quickly talk about uh, oh, Philae the, the here? Philae well, so, yeah. in terms of, of getting close to a, an asteroid, this, this is as this, close this, as one this, can this, get. Yeah, uh, Philae actually did touch down, and, and it was designed to make measurements on the surface of the comet. We had a little bit of a different uh, interaction with the comet than we first thought, and of course the, the, the first landing wasn't that successful. It bounced, it, it bounced about a kilometre, didn't yes, it? Yes, indeed, indeed. But the, the, the gravity was such that we did get quite a nice yeah, travel across the surface. We did science in that time as well, actually, that we would never have expected. But we did, I would say, about 80% of the science that we, we were planning to do uh, in the end anyway. And it's, well, this was part of it as well. It's not just about the science. I'll go back to the, the reason we're here, that there was something about this mission, that there were these two spacecraft, they had this connection, that people were interested in the exploration, in this adventure to somewhere new, which I think is echoed completely by the ethos of, uh, of Star Trek. So I think, yeah, with uh, Rosetta, that's quite a good parallel to make. And if I remember rightly, Philae very briefly reappeared. I think Rosetta was able to actually to spot it because it landed in shade or something, yes, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, so, uh, well, there's two things. In, in, the, uh, in the summer of uh, oh, early 2016, we, we heard, no, sorry, it, during 2015, we heard from it again, but it was not very healthy. Mm -hmm. And then when we were spiralling the Rosetta main spacecraft down to the surface to crash, we were able to get an image of it on the surface. And actually... Uh, <laughs> With Rosetta, all things that were a bit exciting always happen at the weekend. So I got that phone call at about 11 o'clock in the evening on the Sunday. We found Rosetta, uh, we found Philae on the surface, and yeah, that was uh, it. Was difficult to get back to sleep after that one, but we were happy that before we finished the mission, we were able to get that that final image, which you will see running behind you, I think, on one of these. Uh, uh, well, I'm not sure if it's on this one actually, but yeah, we've got a set of images that will yeah we we can show people if they're interested when they come. Incredible stuff. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks very much.